This is Akash, a 22-year-old male with external deviation of the nose. The Ela columella complex is lying flat rather than standing up. Diagnostic nasal endoscopy showed gross anterior deviation of the septal cartilage to the left with septal spur in contact with the lateral wall blocking the left nasal cavity. The incision is marked out. I prefer the external rhinoplasty approach for the exposure it offers. Number 15 blade is used to make the incision. The Gillies incision is completed. The columella skin is dissected off with a combination of sharp and blunt dissection. Care should be taken to keep the lower alar cartilages intact. The domes and lateral crura of the lower lateral cartilages are exposed as the dissection proceeds. Adequate attraction is important to reach the correct plane of dissection. One finger on the dorsal surface of the skin guides through dissection and prevents buttonhole. Once the dorsum is reached, dissection proceeds very close to the cartilage surface. The deviated cartilage in a part of the nose can be appreciated now. This is to show you the amount of deviation of the nose away from the midline. At this point, one can excise the cephalic part of the lateral crura. After the excision, we proceed to skeletonize the septal cartilage. This is done by separating the two medial crura and through the membranous septum. The caudal border of the septal cartilage is identified. The perichondrium is tightly adherent to the cartilage in this area. With some sharp dissection, the mucocutaneous and mucoperichondrial flaps are elevated on both sides to skeletonize the septal cartilage. The elevation of flaps on either side is generally done by feel rather than by vision. The deviated dorsum and the freed cartilages can be seen now. An incision is made in the midline to compensate for the excess tissue present on the concave side. The upper alar cartilage is separated from the septal cartilage by scissors. A number 15 blade may also be used. Now the septal cartilage is dislocated from the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. The cartilage is released from its attachments to the maxillary crest. The buckled septal cartilage and the angulation it makes can be appreciated now. The cartilage is being released from the Voma. The cartilage is removed in toto. The remaining part of the bony deviation and spur is removed by submucous resection. Replacing the flaps back in the midline shows a wide left nasal cavity. Since the bony part of the nose is fairly straight, osteotomies are not necessary. The bony prominence on the left side is removed by rasping. At a back table, 
The cartilage is trimmed to size. A trimmed portion of the cartilage is used to reinforce and straighten the buccal cartilage by suturing it right over the weak point of the cartilage. The straightened and strengthened cartilage is in view. The same is reinserted between the flaps. The membranous septum is recreated by suturing the flaps together. A modified Goldman tip is done to lengthen the medial crura. By changing the position of the angle between the medial and lateral crura, the columella can be lengthened. A silk traction suture is placed over the cartilage and brought out through the membranous septum and between the medial crura. By pulling on the silk suture, the cartilage can be pulled to a forward position. While the assistant is applying constant traction, the septum is quilted on several places with 4-0 chromic catgut. The divided dorsal components are sutured together. Once the cartilage is fixed in place, the traction suture is cut and removed. The flap replaced and sutured with ethylon and catgut to produce this result.